Okay, so 14, now we're getting into our antiderivatives. With 14, we see the antiderivative of the cosine of 3x. So we have an inner function here, so that's our trigger that we're going to make u equal to that inner function, u is 3x, and the derivative of 3x is 3, so du is 3dx. We have the dx, but we don't have the 3, so we're going to put that in. Right, which means we need the corresponding one-third outside. So this will be equal to one-third antiderivative cosine, and now we do our substitution. 3x is out, and u is in, and then 3 and dx are out, and du is in. All right, so we've taken a, a more elaborate antiderivative and turned it into a very basic one. This is one of our uh, antiderivative rules, we know that cosine's antiderivative is sine. So we're going to have one-third sine of u plus c. Right? Now we don't see any u's in our answer, so we can back substitute. Right? So we'll have one-third sine u, we know is 3x, so it's sine of 3x plus c. Now we're looking for that answer, and we can see it is right there with c. But notice that you know we're 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 going to see a lot of close confusion, all right? It's, you know, students, is my antiderivative sine or negative sine? Because there's the negative one right there for b. So they're going to try and make it difficult with these tricks. Okay, 15. 15 initially looks like u substitution, doesn't it? We see an inner function, so we were thinking, and I'm going to do some pencil because it's actually not correct. We're thinking that u is x cubed plus 1, and du is 3x squared dx. All right, That all works out well, except that we don't have the 3x squared. And if it was just the 3 that we were missing, like up above, that would be OK. But if we're missing a variable, we cannot throw the variable in there because we're adding solutions to our answer that do not exist. So this cannot be done with u substitution. We have to go like we did way back before we learned use substitution and think of this as a product of x cubed plus 1 times x cubed plus 1. And if we do our distribution here, our, our FOIL if you will, we end up having the antiderivative of x to the sixth plus, um, and then we do outside and inside, we get x cubed and x cubed, so that's 2x cubed plus 1. So this is the antiderivative we need to find. That's not too bad for us because we can use our reverse rules. I'm going to shoot down here. So I have x to the 7th over 7 plus 2x to the 4th over 4 plus this one will anti-derive to just x. And I need a plus c. Um, and I can see that this is going to match with b. They did a little simplifying here, 2 over 4 down to 1 half, but it matches with b. 16, we have more substitution happening. All right, this is similar to number 14, except we've got sine and cosine. So it's just two for the price of one here. Um, we can, you can break this up into the antiderivative of sine of 2x dx plus antiderivative of cosine 2x dx. We can do that. You, you can actually get away with not doing that, um, but if you prefer, you certainly can. Um, now we have our u is equal to 2x and du is equal to 2dx, just like we did up in the top of the page. In both cases, we need a 2 and a 1 half in order to counterbalance it. So we end up having 1 half the antiderivative of the sine of u du plus 1 half of the antiderivative of the cosine of u du. Right. Sine has an antiderivative of negative cosine. So I'm going to shoot down here to the bottom. So this is going to become negative 1 half cosine of u. Right? And there is a plus c, but I'm going to hold off because I've still got another antiderivative to do. And we have our 1 half. And then cosine's antiderivative is sine. So 1 half sine u. And now I'm going to put the two c's together and make 1. Um, so I need a 1 half that's negative in front of the cosine and positive in front of the sine, and that's going to be b uh, once we put the um, x values back into the final answer. All right, so um, that's it for this page.